if you would, talk about, um, as you know, Justice Kennedy was quite concerned about children uh, when he wrote the Windsor case. Judge Posner, in one of these cases, said it was particularly cruel uh, to children of same-sex parents to deny them the right to, to legalize their union. So talk about that. Sure. Um, let me venture another uh, guess about the audience. Uh, I'm going to venture the guess that everyone in this hall is in favor of marriage equality. And we're all in favor of the equal protection of the laws applying to all people. Uh, we want to see all people treated equally. We want to see all marriages treated equally. Uh, where we have a disagreement on this stage is about what type of consenting adult relationship is a marriage. Uh, we have two different visions of what marriage is. Our opponents think it's just about two consenting adults who choose to live with each other and love each other. Austin and I think the vision of marriage is about a comprehensive union of sexually complementary spouses where a man and a woman unite as husband and wife to then provide children with a mother and a father. We want the law to treat the vision of marriage that is true equally for all people. Marriage equality is based upon and premised on marriage reality. And what the Equal Protection Clause says is that you have to treat things that are the same in the same way. You don't have to treat different things in the same way. Uh, there are good reasons for thinking that the union of a man and a woman is different than the union of two men or two women. And so there are good reasons for the states to choose whether or not to recognize the union of two men or two women as the same thing as a marriage. The Constitution doesn't answer this. Equal protection alone won't get you there unless you smuggle in your own vision of marriage the genderless vision of marriage, and then say the Constitution requires it. Because uh, no one in this room wants to deny marriage equality to anyone, provided we understand accurately what marriage is. Uh, Robbie mentioned the studies on uh, children raised by same-sex parents. Um, not a single one of the large, random, representative samples comes to the conclusion that she says all of the major scientific bodies now affirm. At the very beginning of this debate, Bob mentioned to us that this audience might not be uh, random and representative, it's certainly not large. Um, large, random, representative samples matter. They matter for the uh, 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 audience of a debate. They matter even more importantly for social science. From a non-representative sample, you can draw no conclusions about a population as a whole. Uh, the only social science studies that have been conducted using large, random, and representative samples have shown that children raised by their intact married mother and father uh, turn out the best on most every measurable outcome than children raised in all of the alternative uh, parenting structures, including same-sex parenting. But even then, we only have eight studies using large, random, representative samples on children raised by same-sex couples. So why would we want to rush to a conclusion one way or the other on this question when we have eight studies? We have thousands of studies from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s on parenting between a husband and a wife, a mother and a father, as compared to single parenting, divorce, divorce and remarriage, and cohabitation. So we had thousands of studies like that, and all of them came to the conclusion that the intact married family uh, provided better outcomes than divorce, divorce and remarriage, cohabitation, or single parenting. Well, let we me, now let have me eight to, studies me... on the same sex parenting question, so I just don't think the court should rush to a conclusion one way or the other. We should keep collecting the data, we should keep analyzing, we should keep debating.